Hi, everyone. Um, so today, we are going to speak on stewarding usability for open source softwares with a special focus on um, usability metrics and measurement. Um, for a moment after the talk by Chris from Mura Design, we thought we are being redundant. But I think this is going to be more like a next chapter in the book of usability. Um, hi, I'm uh, Abhishek. I'm a senior designer at Superbloom. I'm Katie, a lead design researcher at Superbloom. Um, if you're unfamiliar with us, uh, we are a nonprofit design and research organization uh, partnering with many open source projects in the digital rights and internet freedom communities. Um, and uh, as Abby said, we're focusing today on um, usability, uh, and our case study is um, a humanitarian open source project. Um, and Chris gave a really great intro to usability today, so um, I think we're likely on the same page. But um, for humanitarian and human rights work in particular um, that rely on digital tools to document harms, organize crisis response, and disseminate information, um, uh, a lot of these tools are rarely resourced to focus on design and usability, but usability of these tools is, of course, critically important so that the people doing this work can effectively navigate tools and log and document their information for however they'll use it from litigation to direct service on the ground. Um, and uh, in particular, this project is focusing on the usability of security features within um, a humanitarian documentation project, which we'll get into a little bit later. But we just want to emphasize that usability is really critical security infrastructure as well, especially for people documenting such, such sensitive information. Um, so it's really critically important that people using these tools understand the security features that they are navigating um, and the consequences of their actions when they're um, navigating an interface. So what is usability measurement? Largely, usability is known and seen as like something that it's a perception, it's a feeling. When we talk about usability, we say, I think the product is usable or the interface is usable. But um, our talk is more about how to make it um, more systemic, data-driven, so that you can say it's usable, but by how much? You know, To make um, your usability insights more tangible and concrete when you share it with your stakeholders and when you present it with the larger audience. So why is it useful to measure usability in this way? Um, we don't want to suggest replacing this um, kind of metrics approach, uh, sorry, rep replacing a more qualitative approach with this metrics approach. They really go hand in hand. But um, we found uh, with this project in particular uh, that there are some benefits from being able to measure the usability of a system over time um, in a more kind of quantitative sense. So firstly, um, buy-in. We heard a lot yesterday and some today about um, kind of reticence on the, on the part of open source projects to invest time and money in design efforts. Um, and sometimes getting kind of a concrete picture of how usability can um, improve a system over time uh, can just more easily communicate the value of this work. Um, and uh, kind of the other side of the same coin is that funders like impact metrics. <laughs> so uh, grant makers are often uh, more willing to invest in something that is measurable and that you can document the um, the benefit of. So um, these metrics can help secure and retain funding for UX work, and that was actually the impetus of this project we were working on. And um, as with all U usability work, um, it helps target your improvements and, and what will really help the user experience. Um, briefly, how to measure and collect data. You can essentially like create your own metrics, but today we want to present some of these industry-accepted 
uh, metrics and measurements that we'll discuss in the next section through a case study. Uh, but some of the data collection methods are doing user surveys. So you send out a form, collect user responses. You can also do in-app prompts. Now, this is a lot more helpful for like SaaS and hosted applications, where you prompt like a one question or a survey of two, three questions, and users responded within the application. Uh, so that's an alternative to user survey. Uh, you can also do app logs. This is um, not so easy for open source and um, you know hosted solutions. Like, um, but if you are doing SaaS like Penpot, if you're you know you're using, so you can do app logs. Um, and then the other method is of course user interviews and tests. So you do recordings and you analyze and um, collect data from there. So uh, this particular project was. Um, uh, our work with Bayanat, which is a tool from the Syria Justice and Accountability Center. Um, it is a human rights documentation data management software that is open source and used by human rights organizations to collect, process, and document human rights violence. Um, so Bayanat's funder was interested in funding by a not to focus on the usability of their new security features, but they um, required metrics and measurable outcomes from this investment. And so we have a two-year partnership with um, SJAC to uh, use um, these usability indicators uh, to measure usability and um, by a not over uh, a period of two years so that we can really track progress. Awesome. So this is basically the core and the most important part of our uh, presentation, which is um, the usability metrics uh, we selected for Bayanath. We identified these seven metrics. Uh, their system usability score, which is like an overall um, score for how usable the application or the interface is. Um, there's net promoter score which is an indication of um, how likely the users are to promote or uh, share the, uh, the application with others. And it's spe uh, especially important for like um, mass you know, uh, applications and products where you want to increase product adoption. Uh, there's user satisfaction score. There's an indication of how happy the users are. This is different from one, uh, the first one, in the sense that the first one is more about usability, and this is more like how delighted the users are. That's the usability aspect. Um, then user security score. There's something we came up with. Uh, we created our like uh, Drew methodology for this one, which is uh, specifically measuring how safe and secure the users feel when using the application. There's user effort score, which is an indication of the amount of effort a user needs to exert to use the application, whether they need to like spend a lot of time um, using it. And then, then we have task success rate, um, how um, users are able to use the interfaces without making an error. Uh, and then efficiency is how long a user takes to complete the task. Do you want uh, it to be faster? Do you want, is it okay if they take like 10 minutes using a feature? Uh, I won't go into like specifically how it, this is calculated, measured, and all of that. It, it, is, it can get a bit dense, and in the interest of time, we won't go in, into that. But I'll just quickly show you a brief uh, like snapshot of what the usability, uh, usability, system usability score survey looks like. It's a set of these 10 questions, and users respond on um, a scale of strongly agree to strongly disagree. And then there's a method of like giving scores to each of the responses and calculating it. Um, yep. Um, so as Abby mentioned, there are a couple of methods for collecting this information. And how we approached it was um, you saw a snapshot of this survey, but we are sending out a quarterly survey to um, Bionaut users, so um, one user per organization that utilizes Bionaut, to um, fill out the system usability score, the net promoter score, the user satisfaction score, and this feeling of security and privacy. Um, and then the second piece is testing. Um, and these are on a per feature basis. So as uh, they're releasing new security related features, we are testing um, a series of tasks per feature on user effort, task success, and the time it takes users to complete those tasks. 
Um, part of the process is calculation. I said I won't go much into detail, but I just want to give you a snapshot. So the this is uh, the first um, column is the feature we wanted to test. Second column is these users we tested with. And then you'll see the column for task. These are all the tasks that we um, uh, gave to the users to perform. And then we calculated each of the scores in the following columns, uh, effort score, time to complete, uh, followed by like some of the comments on uh, if we saw that the score was unusually high or low, then we would figure out um, why that is the case. So that's more qualitative part. Um, yeah, and uh, so and this is the example of like uh, survey results. Uh, we'll just give two examples. One is this: um, uh, when we after we tested Bayanath, we found out that the user satisfaction score was about seventy percent, which means seventy percent of the users were uh, satisfied with with the interface and application. Um, but our benchmark is to take it to seventy five or eighty five percent for it to be considered like good. Uh, similarly, for user security score, we said. Um, a score of 30 to 35 would be good, but they score 27.5, which means there's some work to be done on the security side as well. Um, and just to uh, make clear that um, there is also a very necessary qualitative aspect of this process, um, because of course numbers can give us a picture of what's going on, but do not tell us why those things are happening. So um, the benefit of user testing in this process is that we can actually know what's going on on, on the interface that prevents users from either scoring higher um, on different tests or uh, expressing more enthusiasm about the um, interface. Um, so for the uh, first um, feature we were testing, it was about access control, so um, whether different user uh, types on the platform can access certain or restrict certain pieces of information. Um, and so we found out through the user tests not only you know, where we are able, able to measure the task success rate for the different um, aspects of this new feature, but we were able to see that, for example, um, users really struggled to update um, the access control on individual bulletins, which are what Bionaut calls uh, pieces of data. And um, there was just a very, very clunky flow um, that included a kind of random bulk update <laughs> mode um, that people really struggled to through, um, and so uh, doing this test gave us this um, quantitative data, but also gave us uh, the method through which to improve the interface. Yeah, I'm sure like you might have zoned out in the last slide because that's very specific to Bayanath. Uh, and that uh, feedback will look very you know different for each of the applications. This is the dashboard that we created for uh, the Bayanath funders for them to see. Uh, so all they need to see is these are the four metrics we are working with. And um, we know like system usability score is here and here, uh, net promoter score is here. And they get a snapshot of what the application usability looks like. Uh, so they don't need to go into the depth of the work that the designer is doing and they just get a snapshot and the designer can make a case for like, we need to work on this, this, this. And there is a common language, uh, shared language between the stakeholders to um, promote their design work as well. Um, yes, I think um, our work won't be complete without some disclaimers and considerations. Like, our project was fairly small. There were like 10 um, organizations who were using this software. So what I want to highlight is the data collection and the analysis and calculation will depend on the project size. If it's a fairly large project um, um, and there's a lot of users, then you might want to vary the size of um, the user base that you're testing with. Um, and the other thing is like the data and measurements are based on user feedback. So the accuracy, accuracy of the uh, real results will depend on, on how accurately the users respond to your surveys. So design it accordingly. And also how um, the UX team is interpreting the results and uh, scoring it. Uh, use ethical and privacy-driven methods for data collection. I know this will come up. Somebody will say, so I wanted to put it out there. Um, and one thing is like many times these measurements do not get included in the projects, the UX, UI projects, because a lot of times as designers, we do not know how to allocate budget and estimate for this work. 
Um, so just by including this process and making her part of like regular um, design activity, um, this can help um, the project, yes. Yeah, thank you um, for listening in. That's great. Thank you very much. Um, we'll look for any questions that people might have at this point. Yeah. Hi, friends. Um, thank you so much. That was an amazing talk. Um, uh, you mentioned that this was motivated by a funder requirement to uh, submit usability metrics. So what I was it as coming from the perspective of uh, working at the Open Technology Fund, we also ask projects um, for their own metrics and evaluation, um, and usability is a tricky one. So it's really interesting to see this. So um, that being said, like how in this example, how did um, the budget for this work fit in? I guess, like, it, was it built in as part of Bionaut's funding to do this, or was this kind of set of metrics set up for devs to do themselves, or is the assumption that, like, funders need to build in uh, usability support to actually conduct these measurements? Yeah, um, good question. So this is more of a Bionaut and their funder relationship, but I'll try to answer what I know best. So they allocated a separate resource to do just this work. And um, what Bionaut or SJAC team heard was, uh, I mean, this was an entire project. It was not a part of like usability, which is what surprised me at once because not a lot of like projects get special budgets just to do this. Um, so from what I know, they um, created a different um, uh, you know, set aside a separate budget for this. And a part of this is like for them to be able to adopt it as a part of their internal like. So we may be able to hand this process and methodology over to them to then take it forward. Uh, like you said, like dev team or um, whoever product manager could take this forward on their own. I just wanted to add, oh, I never, I didn't have to be clicking the button the whole time. Um, <laughs> but um, I just wanted to add that I think uh, I do, okay. Um, uh, part of the value add for Bionaut was that um, there was an initial investment of having to develop the metrics, but then it was actually a much lower cost for them to incorporate usability testing in this kind of like uh, per feature basis so that they could uh, invest less money, but over a long period of time to kind of keep up the momentum with this work, which I thought was interesting. So if you develop the metrics, which that was like the most time intensive part for us was that this was a new process and we had to develop the metrics. But then once we had them, actually the, the intervention of getting uh, the measurements done and um, testing each feature is actually quite low. Yeah. I have to push the button now. <laughs> okay. Uh, I think we're out of time, so if you have any other questions, please get them at the coffee break. But thank you very much. Let's get them a warm, warm applause.